Squatty Nerdigans, this is the one and only Packer Girl 89 and today's Manga Nerdigan Live Reaction video is going to be for Fire Force Chapter 251 and the key has been turned and the freaking cataclysm has finally, finally started. So let's get to this chapter and see what Abyss of Despair is in store for us this week. The pulsing echoes of ill intent slowly wear at her soul. This cover page of Hanwe is freaking fantastic. I love it. I can feel like Hanwe's like nightmares that she's going through. It is just great. And this chapter is laughter as the shield crumbles. The battle carries on outside Amaterasu. Can they overcome the wall that is Charon? Dude, this is gonna be hard. And it's not just can they overcome the wall that is Charon, but Arthur's got to overcome the wall that really is himself, his imagination, because right now it is blocked because of that psychological warfare Dragon's got going on. But man, Okubo, this art is fabulous. Vulcancon! Vulcancon! What's the status inside Amaterasu? There's got to be a limit to how much energy you can absorb. I'm going to bring all this to an end. Ooh, dude, look how beat the fuck up Charon is getting. You're not wrong. I'm about at my limit. I kept you waiting, Humway. Ooh, I'm going to bring an end to the hell she's endured. Oh, this could be good. Humway? Humway? Hey, where are you? I take my eyes off you for one second and you disappear. Humway? Kimono Chiha, man, because we we are kind of getting something a little bit similar going on where we're getting these lost memories going on. Um, and they're really heartbreaking. First it was with Khan and now it's with Hanwe. Go figure. What Ugh. are you alright? My head is gonna split open. Um, everyone's hate, it's in my head. Dude, the timing of this is freaking like I don't know. It's just so perfect. It's just freaking scary because I'm, you know, of course, at the timing of this recording, um, I was, uh, right before I came and started recording, I'm in the Riot Life PD chat rooms, um, got the whole thing with Tacoma going on, and man, the room I was in is full of toxicity. It really is. And all that hate that's going on in there. Not in just the chat room, but in the streams. Because usually with the chat rooms that I like to go in for Riot Life PD, it's usually fun and like hard and we just make fun of what's going on and it kind of like balances it out. But here, whoa. But, oh God, it's gotten very, very toxic. So it's got like being able to record live reactions and it's just like an from that for a while and it's just oh it's just really really nice but I but this right here with with Hamaway I totally understand what she's talking about with everyone's hate in my head and it's like splitting open because I have gotten migraines from all this toxicity I really have and I've had to step away from it I mean inauguration day on January 20th oh my god that that was fucking insanity. And like, I, and literally, I think it was the next day or even, maybe it was the same day. I can't, I think it was the next day or later that day. One of those two days. I was bullied by the Pino sheep and I was just and dealing with their hate because I tried to, you know, engage in a debate and it's just like, really, I don't need this shit. I don't need any more hate than, hate than I've been seeing in the streams. Fuck y'all. So, I bounced from there. So, yeah. I'm... But anyway, I know I went off at a tangent, but the whole point of that tangent was to say that, like, the timing of this is just... It's just freaking, freaking coincidental. It's so coincidental and perfect. It's kind of scary because I'm going through the same thing that, like, Hamaway is talking about right now. Hamaway... Oh. Ooh, she punched him. Stop worrying about me. I can hear what's in your head, you know. If it'll help ease the burden you're carrying, beat me until you feel better. Aha. Ooh! 
she punched him. See, that's the, and yeah, when you have, when you're able to just like find an outlet to get all that frustration out on, it really helps. It, like when you are so trapped in your head like that and have like nothing but your negative thoughts in there and all that hate in there, especially in homily situation, it's just going to build up in your head until it explodes. But if you have an outlet, and for me, it's doing, you know, reading and also doing these live reactions, it just, you get all that anger out. You get all that emotion out. You get all that, those pent up feelings out. And it's just like a huge release. And it feels so good. You have no idea. I'm telling you, this is the best fucking form of therapy ever. And it's free. So suck on that, ther overpriced therapists. I know it's crazy, right? Then I make money. I get to make some money in the process. Or at least try to make some money in the process. Worn herself out, huh? Did Humway give you those injuries? You look awful. She can't rest when, even when she's sleeping. Humanity's emotions keep pouring into her little head. For her, the only way to escape from it is in madness, cruelty, and joy. Aren't you supposed to be charred on the reflector? I thought you could absorb the damage. Her violence is her pain. If I can understand even a fraction of her pain, I'll take everything she's got. Ooh. That's nonsense. Her pain is my pain? You're a guardian too. You ought to understand. I think anyone else would break being on the receiving end of the collective unconscious. Um, unconscious. She was born the symbol of a holy maiden. She once had a pure heart that it could accept man's wickedness. Even though she absorbed so much cruelty, she survives. This freaking panel right here is just freaking beautiful. I love this background. It just, it really reflects what Okubo is saying with this writing that she once had a pure heart that could accept man's wickedness. It really reflects, reflects that purity. And that's why I just can't wait for this interaction with Hamoy and Iris in particular. This is going to be very interesting. Um, I would love to find out if like, um, and I still am kind of holding out on this theory that Hamoy, uh, that Iris is Hamoy's doppelganger. Because to me, that or like maybe like twin or something, or like sister or something. Because to me, that just would make sense if like, especially if like Iris was her doppelganger. Just something would, has to click in that direction. It just would make the most sense. Um, because her sister is like her complete opposite. Anyway, even though she's absorbed so much cruelty, she, she survives. She's bearing all of mankind's evil in that tiny body of hers. Her holiness has changed so much in the ten years since her Adola burst awaken. Oh my gosh. Hamoe Sama, it's time for mass. Dread, interest, esteem, fear. Um, don't think um, Hamoe Sama will he uh, hear everything. Still, though, she's grown so beautiful. I wonder what's under that crown. Fine. Thank you. Ooh, and what's she can hear all that evil laughter she can hear it all and you know what all that evil she's hearing you know what that's probably from and it's not just mankind she is hearing probably more from you know the adola than anything else i would love it if that was the twist holy shit the voices never stop. They just get louder. But I won't break yet. I'll just have to enjoy the wickedness. Calm down, Humway. <laughs> Kill yourselves. Drop dead. All of you. You make me laugh. <laughs> I love it. Die. You're in my way. <laughs> Dude, I don't play. She is fucking snapping. She is. I don't blame her if she is hearing all these fucking laughs, these these evil laughs, and I'm just curious where they're really coming from, because something just doesn't seem right. Like, yes, you can make yeah. It, I just don't trust everything that's coming out of like the uh, Charon or any of the fucking people from the cult. 
I just think, like, I'm putting my tinfoil hat on here for a second. I think it would make more sense if it was coming out of the Adola, those wicked laughs. That, to me, would make the most sense. It just would. when her Because, this, remember, this started happening when her Adola burst awakened. So, to me, that would make the most sense. I don't know. And maybe I'm wrong, but this is just this is just the tinfoil hat log of conspiracy theory I got going on here. But anyway, I'm going to take my tinfoil hat on. And unlike Alex Jones, and uh, a.k.a. King Larper, at least mine are within the realm of possibility. And I'm not up there with the aliens. You okay? It's just a little violence. Of course I'm okay. Because look at Homeway's behavior. It's a lot like the violence we have seen from the Infernals. I see. Hey, Charon. How do you feel about me? I mean, I, I mean, what? How do I feel about you? Never gave it much thought. You can see in my, inside my head, can't you? You tell me. Ooh. Unconditional love. Fighting the darkness of this world all alone, so also uh, so we can light up the star. Now grant this planet salvation and cleanse the darkness within her. Charon, 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 no! Um, even um, even as the shield crumbles, he passes with. <gasps> He's gonna die. He's dead. Even as the shield crumbles, he passes with laughter, believing in the joy beyond destruction. You can handle the rest on your own, Hamaway. <gasps> This panel right here is this, or I should say this final page and also leading up to this final page is just beautiful. And look at like the panel in between Hamue and Charon, the dement separating the dimensions between the, um, the earth and the Dola, the yin and the yang. This is fucking brilliant they're coming ever closer and once those moons um connect that's when it's gonna start that's what's gonna really really kick off but man this page is better where charon is like dying is just so so beautiful but look also look at that eye what does that eye mean Looking down, what does that eye, what is that eye? There's something up with this eye. We don't, is that eye the Adola? Hmm. That's what I'm curious about. What is that fucking eye? And what are the, uh, are the moon symbolizing the earth and the Adola itself? And what is that fucking eye? That's what I'm just like, hmm. I feel like the moon's, the moon's got to symbolize the earth and, um, Adola. And they're coming closer to Amaterasu in the center. And just that eye is just really like, hmm, I, I don't know. Because they're connected to that... Uh, oh, that's the sun. They're connected to the sun. But that eye is still, like... It's still bugging me. What is up in there? Is that the purga... That's got to be the purgatory, right? That they're in? That's, that's got to be the purgatory where everybody else is in, right? Where the pillars are in. But there might be something else more to that. Right? Right? Remember, I remember some, uh, a while back, you guys were telling me in the comment section that there was this theory going on, that there was going to be, like, ethereal, like, angels coming into play. And 
I wonder if that eye up there might have something to do with that. We could have that as well. But anyway, let me give you my thoughts on this chapter. I think I thought this chapter was great and it got all of us, at least it got me thinking this. And I should have thought about this sooner. Um, when we first found out about Han Wei, um, her nightmares. But now that we know that this didn't really start until her Adola burst uh, kicked in, I think it makes more sense to really think about it this way, especially with how her, how um, when she was born up until from up from how she was born up until like her Adola burst um, uh, kicked in, she only heard like the good side of humanity and then once it um once her dola burst you know kicked in it was all the nasty side and it just makes me wonder if this was you know maybe she um maybe she's hearing the, maybe she's hearing the darkness of the adola or what i that because that's like some infernal shit going on but she but we know there's like some evil wickedness going on up in the in the death and the death cult too so i keep thinking maybe that evil she's hearing is what's going on in the you know in the white hoods shit not what's going on around the world but what's going on in the white hoods in the church and maybe it's like that um Maybe it's like what Yona was taught, like Yona talking to um, some of the uh, pe people in the other world, like something. I just feel like there's something going on that we're, that we're missing. There's something else going on. And I still think there's a connection with Iris. I really do. There is a connection with Iris there as well. And there's also the other thing we still have to figure out and explore is the connect is what's going on with Shinra and his doppelganger because remember and this is the other thing that you know that comes to mind and this theory kind of would apply to Hamaway as well is look at um look at Burns remember Burns and his doppelganger in particular uh his doppelganger was buried inside of him and trying to take over like, what if we have that same situation going on with Hamue? That is definitely a possibility. And you could say the same thing with this possible, uh, like, this could be something similar with Shinra. Um, but I'm really curious what you guys think in regards to this. What do you think is going on here with Hamue? Because there is something, something not right here. There's something that I just think we're all missing. In regards to Hamaway's um, awakening, that I think is going to really change everything. I really do, especially in terms of, especially with everything that we've seen so far, and connect it, and like I just keep thinking about like the connection that we've seen her have with um, with the desires and everything, and I keep thinking that she's trying to connect with uh, she's. Try to connect with the Adola. So, like, I keep thinking, okay, that even makes, now that I'm thinking about more, it just makes even more sense that the negative voices that she's been hearing, all the hatred and shit, has got to be coming from the Adola more than humanity. Or, like, it, maybe the um, negative voices she heard, all that hate she heard from the, uh, from the humans, were humans that were about to combust. I... I there's just so many possibilities that this could be, but there is just something going on with Hamaway that I think it's bigger than we all realize. Um, but anyway, I want to know what you guys thought of this chapter, what you guys think is really going on with Hamaway, and um, what do you guys think especially about this last panel, the symbolism in this last panel? That's the thing that's really getting me the most is what's going on especially with that eye. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, what you guys think. And remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Nerdigans Inc. If you love what I'm doing and want to help keep this channel alive so I can keep bringing you more Fire Force content, there's a few ways you could do that. You could donate to my Cash App, PayPal, Patreon, purchase something off my Amazon wish list. All that's in the description box below. Also, make sure you follow me on Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, friend me on PlayStation Network. That's in the description box below as well. Till next time, Nerdigans, I will be seeing you later.